Hi, in this tutorial we're gonna create some animated graphics like these that you can use as overlays for your videos. So I want to keep this text object but I want to apply this boolean modifier. Now the funny thing is we can actually use a boolean modifier on a text object inside of geometry nodes. If you're new here I already have a bunch of geometry nodes tutorials so check them out. Geometry nodes is basically a non-destructive way of creating and manipulating geometry. So let's switch over to geometry nodes. Here we have our text and there's our big cube. And uh, geometry nodes is, as the name would suggest, a node-based system. So we can create our own modifier with this node system. We create a new node tree. This is the input geometry and this is the output geometry. And the geometry in this case is our text. And we can actually plug in a boolean node in here. So we can search for boolean, mesh boolean in here. And we can bring in our big cube. I can just drag it in here. Maybe I should call this uh, like boolean or cutaway or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so this is the information of our cube. I have to switch this over to a relative because I moved my cube over here. So I want the relative position that takes into account these changes here on my cube. I mean, these changes here. Where's my text? And then I say, okay, cut away the cube from my text. And as you can see, it works. Text is gone. So let's see if this works. This moves over, the pill comes out and the text comes out too. And it's actually being cut using our big cube. So this way, using geometry nodes, we can actually do booleans on text objects. Let's go back to this. Now I'm going to hide my boolean in a viewport and render so that we actually have this very nice looking animation. Okay, so what do we have on frame? What was it? 35, we're actually in the resting position for the pill. Now we're gonna wait for 10 frames, 45. Right here, we're gonna add another keyframe to the X location of the pill. Right click, insert single keyframe. And then from here on to 55, we want to move uh, this pill back over to the left. So let's just move it over to the left until it's all gone and inside of our cube to cut stuff away like this. Insert single keyframe. And for this animation, I actually don't want, I don't need this bouncing or this back interpolation. I just want it to start real slow and then get faster. So I'm gonna change my handles here like this. Something like this. Okay, so boop goes back in like this. Okay, what do we have so far? Going back. And then on frame 56, probably we want to move this out. We're gonna scale it down to zero again. So frame 50, 55, we're gonna insert a keyframe for the scale. And you know what? We're also gonna do rotation. So right click, insert single keyframe on the C axis, because that's the one that we're that's going straight out of our monitor right now. And then 55, 65, we're gonna set the scale back to zero. I for keyframe. And then we're also gonna do like 180 degree rotation. I for keyframe. So what do we have? Let's look at scale, location. If you hit the home key on your keyboard, it uh, zooms everything into view. Okay, what do we have? What do we have? So we have this. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool animation. However, I want to disable the rotation and look at just the scale because I don't need this, this ease out here. What do I want? Yeah, I'm gonna do it like this. like so and then the which one is left the blue one 
rotate like this so that it just accelerates to nothing. And the rotation, what do we have on the rotation? We also have a bit of an easing. So home key and we rotate this so that it just goes like that. Yeah, okay, that seems to be good animation. It just goes flip and disappears. And then when this disappears, yeah, the, the cube is still cutting away our pill, so there's nothing left to look at. And that will be our animation. I think we're done with the animation. What is what is happening here? Oh no, oh no, oh no. I screwed something up. Yep, this is not. <laughs> this is not good. We want this to be a straight line, right? Also the green one. I must have had something selected that I sh that wasn't good. Okay, and then the blue one. Also bring it over here. Zoom in, hold, move over, pill, move pill out, and then zoom that out. Yep, that's the animation. My name is Chris and I create free Blender tutorials. Check out my channel, I already have a whole lot of Blender videos for you. And consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's go back to Blender. Save the file and well we have the shadow, we have the animation. Um, what else can we do? Yeah, so now we can take care of a few of the details to make it look like super super duper nice. So over here when the when the button, the logo is over here. I want to make this look a little bit more three-dimensional. It looks a st a still a little bit flat. I think we could make it look a little better. So inside of our collection here, I'm gonna shift A and add another area light. Okay, so I'm gonna call this highlight. And this area highlight, I don't know, 50. Uh, bring it over here. Also, of course, bring it up to be above the button. Now, this is going to be a rectangle. A little bit longer, a little bit narrower this way. I just want like a little line. I'm gonna rotate it to have it go like this. And since our button has this three-dimensional shape, we get a nice round reflection here. So if we go to this material, if we bring down the roughness a little bit more. Uh, yeah, let's do 0.2. Okay, so we have this, which looks, oops, which looks, hey, where are you? Looks pretty nice. And then there is something we can also do on the bottom here to make it a little darker. And that is something that is not possible in the real world, I think. <laughs> uh, and that would be we plot in an area light, we bring, again, bring it up above our object. We make it a, let's make it an ellipse, a little bit longer this way, a little bit narrower this way, rotate it this way, bring it down here. And instead of this being an, a light that emits light, we're gonna actually remove light from our scene by setting this to negative one. Oh, or maybe negative two. So this light source actually emits shadows. Well, actually it takes away light, <laughs> okay? So we can remove light from our scene. And now we have this uh, much more 3D looking button here. Negative three maybe, ah, that's a bit too much. Negative two is good, okay? So if we do it that way, bring in this a little. Bring in this a little, yeah, something like that. Let's just add a little bit of a shadow down here. So instead of playing with materials or putting some texture on here or something, I'm just gonna add in a light that removes light. So this is what that is. Did you know that you can do that? Let me know in a comment, okay? Now, of course, we have this animation and the button moves over and 
And our setup over here with the highlight and this shadow, let's call this shadow, is only for the position on the left here. We could still move the lights or make them fade in while the button moves over, but you can play with that. I'm good for this tutorial. This looks good to me. This looks like a very nice um, graphics overlay for my video with my YouTube username. And this is the animation. And then one other thing. So let's go back here. You know that we have the shadows out here. And since I put in this light now, I'm actually destroying my shadows. So if I go to my background and disable the shadow catcher for a second, you can see here that this light out here, that lights up everything and kind of messes up my shadows out here. I don't want this light to mess up my shadows. I don't want this light to affect anything but the reflection on my icon button thing, on this red button. And there's a feature now in Blender which is called light linking and that's exactly what this feature is so awesome for because I can say, hey Blender, this light only shines onto this object. And I can show you that this actually works by switching off our main light. Where is my main light? This is that one, right? So now all we have is this and that one for the shadow. And this light here lights up my entire scene, but I only want it on the, on the YouTube button. So I select the YouTube button, I shift select the light, I hit control L, which brings up the linking menu, and I go link receivers to emitters include. And now this light, if I just select the light, I go into the light properties in here. Uh, I should have in shading, I should have, where is it? Light linking, here we go. So on the light, inside of shading, we have light linking. And inside of the light linking group, we have the logo, which is our play button, which means this light now only shines light onto our play button. And we wanna do the same thing with this one. So we select the play button, shift select this light, Control L, link receivers, include. And now we only get this negative light also on our logo. And everything else is not affected by these two lights. So if I bring back my actual light, we have the nice shadows back. Another thing I would like to have is a little bit more shadow on here. So I want this play button to cast a shadow onto my pill. Now I could spend a day messing with lights and shadows to get it all set up correctly, or I just shift D my light that I know that emits shadows. On this one, I just clear out my light linking group. So now this light, if I set it to negative three, for example, actually casts a shadow on to my pill and I just rotate this, bring it in here and bring it down inside here. Now this is way too strong, negative one and I can play with the size. Let's look at it from the top, bring this out a little, move it over a little and you can see this will be shadow, let's call this, ah, let's just the shadow zero, zero, 001. See, this is with the shadow, this is without the shadow. Am I cutting into my object here? Yes, I am. That's not good. I would have to bring this one up on the C axis a little bit. And since I only added keyframes for the X, I can still play with the C without messing with my animations. So now I have this setup, my shadow light, my light remover. I don't even know what to call it. A light that removes light. <laughs> um, cast some shadow here. If this is a bit too much, I can bring it in. But you get the point. If 
we look at it now through the camera home key this would be that and now that the shadows look correct again um, also they don't look correct again this light should only affect the pill so select sh the light shift select the pill control L again control L emitter include and now we only have this shadow on the pill so that's what light linking is for really cool feature um, now back to this guy and enable the shadow catcher again and now we can render this out so let's see what does this look like rendered I'm gonna save hit F12 I'm gonna get a render in here 4000 samples is a bit much I have to say so that's what that looks like okay pretty cool but what we definitely want for animations like this is motion blur so maybe let's look at this frame here the pill comes out really fast and if I hit F F12 I'm not getting any motion blur so when I render this out into an image sequence and I put that onto my video um, it's gonna look choppy it's gonna go boom 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 I don't want this I want to look at have it look smooth so I have to enable a motion blur. Where is it? Right here, it's just one checkbox, enable motion blur, now hit F12, and now the pill has a motion blur because it's moving fast. And of course, everything else, when it's moving, will have motion blur. Okay, we have a transparent background, we have shadows, we have motion blur, we have our animation. We can now basically set up our output so where are we going to render to? We want PNG, we want RGBA, which includes the transparency, so our very nice transparent background with our very nice transparent shadow on it. And then where, where are we going to render in? Set this up. Uh, the camera, I think, is fine. We have enough space around here. If we don't have enough space, if our shadow actually uh, gets clipped here, we can just go to our camera. Where is it? Camera, and then play with the orthographic scale here and bring it out a little more like this. So that even if this bounces off to the side here, like right here, we still have enough space for the shadow. Yep, very nice. And then we can just go hit render animation and we're gonna get a 70 frame long animation. Actually, we could set this to let's do 66 that will be the end there's nothing visible anymore and that's our graphics animation so what if i want to render out a different logo i just go to the shader i load a different logo maybe the instagram logo then it looks like this is a bit weird because our uvs are not matching now so with this all does the um so with all the vertices selected here, again, I go U, project from view, and then I G, C, make it fit, make it look good. Maybe like this, okay. I can still go into my text object and edit it because maybe I have a different username on Instagram. And then I can render out this image sequence. Did you learn anything new today? Let me know in the comment section. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Bye.